scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, throw that beautiful champagne. I'm going to tell you about the time I cheated on my husband when we was together and me and my homegirl went out of town to meet two dudes off the chat line and it went down. So I had, my husband used to work in Florida and um, he would leave home early in the morning and I ain't going to lie, I'm scared to stay home by myself yet. Well, I used to be. I ain't scared no more. So what I would do was it be still dark outside when he would leave for work so I would call the chat line just to talk to someone on the phone to keep me from being scared and thinking about being home by myself. So one morning he left for work and I had called a chat line and I met this dude named Eric. They was from a town called Newton, Georgia. So me and Eric, we talked on the phone that morning. He was cool as hell. Man, y'all don't know me personally, but I love the joke. I am a, when I was in high school, I was known for joking. I love the joke. He was a straight clown. You hear me? He had me rolling on that phone that morning. So, I had made plans, I ain't gonna lie, to go meet him that weekend. I was gonna go meet him that weekend. But he was like, nah, I want you to come down here tonight. I want to see you tonight. So, I'm thinking like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Well, he went, well, he was from Newton. was probably like 45 minutes away from me. So, I'm like, damn, I, I, don't, I don't know about that shit. You know what I'm saying? How am I going to get away? Well, I'm going to tell my husband, because he don't get he get home by 6 o'clock. Well, I'm going to tell my husband I'm going to go there late. Well, I'm going well, to tell him. So... I, I, so I wanted to go, but I ain't, because my license was suspended. And I needed my homegirl to drive, because when you're driving on no country back roads and stuff at night, sometimes the police will stop you. You know, they have roadblocks and shit. So I asked my homegirl, would she ride with me? Eric told me he had a homeboy for my homegirl. His name was Kyle. So I, when my husband got home from work, I lied and told him that I had to take my homegirl somewhere. And I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I went to pick her up. Me and her went and got gas and everything, and we went to New York. We were heading to New York. This was about 7 o'clock that night. He had told me where to meet him at. Now, I had never been to this town before. He had told me where to meet him at and everything, but where they were going to be at. And when we got there, they, he told me to meet him at a gas station. When you first get into it, it's going to be on the left-hand side. And lo and behold, he was there. Now, mind you, my homegirl driving... And I'm on the passenger side. It's my car, but like I said, my license was suspended. So when they seen us at the gas station, it was Eric and his homeboy. Now, both of them was cute. His homeboy was real cute. So when he saw us, he they came to the car. They came to the car. And so they both gave us $20 for gas or whatever for us for having the car. So, you know what I'm saying? So Eric was married. Eric was married. And he was like, um... He was like, well, we can't go to my house. You know what I'm saying? We got to go to my homeboy grandma house. So I'm like, okay, we can go. You know what I'm saying? No problem. So we riding. My homegirl driving. They in the back seat. I'm on the passenger side. You know what I'm saying? Now, that was during the time when First 48 had just really came out. And I had been watching that shit so much. It had really started fucking with me. Like, I really didn't hardly trust. Like, I kept thinking about, damn, what they do something to us? You know what I'm saying? I don't know them. You know, they in the back seat. They behind us. So, y'all, we just riding and riding. And I'm like, damn, we ain't got to your grandma's house yet, to the grandma's house yet. And he was like, oh, shit. Now, we just laughing, talking, having a good time. He said, oh, shit. We passed the road. So, my homegirl turned around. And this way, it gets spooky. Okay, so, you know, I told you I had met the dude off the chat line and everything. And me and my homegirl went down there to see him. See him and his homeboy. And, you know, I had lied to my husband and told him I was going to take my friend somewhere, whatever, whatever. So, we get to the gas station. You know, I tell you everything about that. So, anyway... If you haven't seen part one, you got to watch part one in order to know what's going on. Okay, so we had it to, so my friend turned around because I'm like, damn, we've been riding for a long time. We ain't got to the house yet. So she turned around. He said, turn on this road right here. Now, y'all, it was during the winter time. So, you know, in the winter time, it get dark early. So it's seven o'clock. It's dark. And we on a, now, if you're from the South, 
or if you ain't from the south, you gonna know. On on dirt roads, it's really really dark. Like it don't be no street lights on no dirt road. The only light be the light from your headlight of your car. So y'all, we on this dirt road. It ain't no houses. All you see is woods. Now on a long dirt road. Now it's like in January. It was in January when it happened. And it was real cold. You know what I'm saying? We don't get snow and all that, but it does get cold and it had been raining. So the road was muddy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing about a dirt road and mud and shit like that. I, I didn't know. I don't work on cars. Hell, I didn't know. So me getting a little suspicious about everything, I look in the back seat. And I said, what y'all got in y'all pocket? I said, let me see what y'all got in your pocket. I cut the head, I cut the light on in the car. I said, what y'all got in your pocket? Cause we all motherfuckers might be up to some shit, but I'm saying in a joking way to kind of keep the, 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 keep the, you know, the vibe on us, you know, cool level. So Eric pulled out some keys and a lighter and the other guy, Kyle, he pulled out like what? Some, a wallet and something else. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't have nothing. So I'm just getting real eerie about this like this this making me feel some type of way that we ain't got no house yet is we on a dirt road we, we the only car on the road and i ain't really seeing no houses so i'm thinking to my aunt, but I, you know i always heard and this is how i always felt if you scared don't never let nobody know you scared don't show fear you get what i'm saying because when you show somebody you scared they'll act on that so we riding we riding and we finally get to a dead end and on that dead end is a pretty ass brick house. It's a nice brick house. It ain't no upstairs, downstairs. It's a flat level, but it's pretty. Like, like real, the, the lawn and stuff is well manicured. You know what I'm saying? Nice, clean cut yard. It, it looked real nice. I mean, for real, it looked really, really nice. Okay, so they got out the car. And they was like, y'all coming in? And I said, yeah, we coming. Hold on, I'm talking to my homegirl for a second. So they got out of whatever. They walked up to the porch. And so, you know, they put the kid in the door or whatever. They went on in. I told my homegirl, pull off. I said, let's go. I said, let's get the fuck on. I don't know about this shit. It's, 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 it's making me feel some type of way. She said, oh, yeah, we need to go anyway. I, she, said, I, she said, I don't know about this. I said, me either. Let's go. So she started driving real, real fast. Well, what I didn't know is if you're on a dirt road and it's been wet and rainy, the faster you go, your, your tires get stuck in the mud. So she going fast, but it's like, she pushing on the gas, but it's like the car not moving. She was like, girl, Yolanda, guess what? I said, what? She said, bitch, I think we stuck. I said, girl, don't fucking tell me that. So y'all, we have way down the road, right? We have way down the road, stuck in the mud. I opened my car though. We so far down in the mud that the mud is up to the to 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 the to the door, like damn near to the door. Like when I open my door, when I step out, my foot gonna sink down in mud. That's how far deep we was in the mud. I got a cell phone, she got a cell phone, but we didn't have no charger. We didn't bring no charger with us. You know what I'm saying? And my phone already like about to die. So I'm calling him. I call Eric. Cause fuck it, I gotta call them. And Kyle answered the phone. No, Eric answered the phone. He was he was drinking, so he was talking all crazy. He was like, yada, 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 y'all tried to leave us. I said, no. Nah. I said, please. I said, look, right now, just put Kyle on the phone. I needed somebody who was sober-minded so they could hear what I was saying. Kyle got on the phone, and he was like, well, I know what happened. You ain't got to tell me. I already know what happened. We on the way. So they came walking down the road with boots on and buckets and shovels and all kind of shit to help us get out. So Kyle is the one who's trying to get us out the mud. And Eric in the back, see, Eric got in the car because he about drinking. He can't do nothing. He can't help nobody do nothing. So I'm worried as hell. I'm like, damn, I got to go home to my husband. Like I'm thinking like, damn, I got to go my ass home. You know, at this time, I wasn't thinking about none of this shit no more. I wasn't thinking about him, none of that. I want to go home. So I get out the car. Now, mind you, I mud everywhere, all over my feet, all over my shoes and shit. So I said, Kyle, be honest with me. How much longer is it going to be? He said, look, man, he said, look, I can't work with y'all asking me every 10 minutes how long it's going to be. He said, I can't do this. He said, I'm already aggravated. It's cold as hell out here and it's, it's muddy. He said, you and my homegirl, you and your homegirl, go to my grandma's house. Just walk down to my grandma's house. It, it, she in there is warm. 
you know, whatever you can, you can charge, you can use, you can use my phone, charge to charge your phone. Just go ahead on and, you know, go to use my, um, go to my grandma's house. So we did. We walked down now. And so we opened the door and everything. The door was unlocked. We opened the door and it was so nice enough. But when you first walked in, you walked into the kitchen. Okay. It was nice. It was a nice house, but it was just so big and long. It was like real big and long. The first thing I noticed on this, on, on, I noticed when I walked in was a lot of mail on the kitchen table and it was a work uniform, a male work uniform on the kitchen table. So my homegirl went in the living room area to go just sit down and find something to watch on TV to kind of get our mind off of everything. But I stayed in the kitchen area by the front door because I was going to try to use a house phone to call my husband to let him know what was going on. I took my friend to her, whoever house, and we got stuck in the mud. So I picked up the phone to dial my husband's number. And I heard my friend say, oh, shit. It was, a, it was a house phone, you know. I heard my homegirl say, oh, shit, from the other room. And I was like, what? And she said, girl, all the lights done went off in the house. Y'all, every light, it went on dial tone on the phone. Every light in the house went out, and you could not cut them back on. So at this point, I'm like, what the fuck? This is just the beginning. So y'all know, well, first of all, if you haven't seen part one and two, you got to go watch that in order to see what I'm talking about in part three. But anyway, so once all the lights went off in the house, I was like, oh, hell no. So me and her went outside. Now, remember, I told y'all that, you know, the only that my car was out on the car on the street because it was a dirt road and when it was real dark. So when we left them, my headlights was on. My headlights was still on because he was changing my tire. Well, not changing my tire, but trying to get the car out of the mud. But anyway, so it's the tire out of the mud. But anyway, so me and her were on the porch to see where they was at. I was just calling their name. And guess what? My headlights was off on my car. So not only did all the lights go off in the house, now it's dark as hell on that dirt road. I'm like, what the fuck going on? So I started crying and she did too. But I'm like, I'm finna die. I'm like, bitch, man, you finna die. She was like, girl, I wanna see my daughter again, girl. We were so scared, right? So I'm calling their name, Eric, Kyle. I mean, loud as hell. Now we're in the middle of we're in the middle of a bunch of woods, so you know what I'm saying? It's like the only house out there, really. So they should be able to hear us. I'm like, Eric, Kyle, Eric, Kyle. You know, we screaming lots, both of us screaming their names to the top of our lungs. Nobody wasn't saying nothing. So I said, get, I said, get my cell phone. I had a little bit of juice up on my phone. Cause now I'm finna call the police. Now I'm finna get the police out here to help us out of here. Cause this, this, this is going too far. So y'all, okay. So I called the police. Now I don't know where we at. I don't even know where to tell the police where, where we at. So the lady said, Newton County 911. I said, ma'am, listen, we're not from here. We from such and such. And you know, we stuck in the mud. I don't, I have no clue where we are. She said, well, I got to have an address in order to send the police. I said, you can't pick it up from my phone where I'm calling from. She said, no, it's not giving me no signal where you at. Okay. So I remember, remember I told y'all when I first started, there was some mail on the kitchen table. So I said, I said, Tamika, my friend, her name was Tamika. I said, go in there and get that mail on the table real quick. Let me give it to the, police, to the um, 911 operator. So she went in there and got the mail. I gave her the address that was on the mail. She put the, the operator put the address in the system, in the database. Y'all won't believe what this lady told me. This lady told me we have no address listed. That's that's not in that's not in, in Newton County. I'm like, what the fuck? I said, I'm at this house. All the mail got the same address. She said it's not in our database. I'm like, oh my fucking God. Tears just running. Tears running now. Cause I know we finna die. I know this is set up. We finna die. So let me tell y'all. Finally, out the blue, like ten minutes later, after me on the porch crying, slinging snot, crying like a motherfucker, Kyle come popping up. Out the blue, and he was like, "Y'all so damn scary. What y'all in here crying for? What y'all crying for?" I said, "All oh, the lights went out." He said, "The damn breaker box went out." So he went and he went and flipped the script, flipped the switch, and it did. All the lights came back on. So he said. You might as well go ahead and call your husband and tell him you ain't coming home. Because I can't get that tire out of that mud. And he said that my cousin had to pull out with his tractor. That's how far deep you in. Well, I got to get a tractor to get you out. So I'm like, what the hell? 
So we all go, no, it's me and Kyle, Eric and my friend Tamika. So we all go in the living room. I called my husband, told him what he said, tell him what the dude said, and then I let him know I spent the night at my friend, but with my friend and her friend, which he thought. Okay. So we all go in the living room. Y'all, guess what they put on the goddamn TV? Somebody wanted to put on a damn horror movie. I said, oh, hell no. I said, oh, no. I said, no, we can watch cartoons or something tonight. I said, no, nah, we'll watch a comedy. they watch cartoons, something funny. I said, I'm not watching no scary movie. Not not now. Hell no. Not right now. So after we watch a few, a little stuff on TV, my mind, all up, my, I ain't studying on TV. Tamika and Kyle, they booed up. I mean, she comfortable now. She, I couldn't believe how I'm like, damn, bitch, we over. Eric trying to fuck. The one that was for me, he trying to fuck. I, I'm like, look, dude, right now, that's over with. We ain't finna do nothing. And so, Tamika and Kyle went to the back. They went to a room in the back, in the back of the house. So I said, "What y'all finna do?" She said, "I'm gonna, she said, I mean, I'm finna go to bed." I'm like, "Bitch, for real, you really finna, fuck, you really finna fuck this nigga, and, and we're in the situation we're in right now." Okay, so, so now it's just me and Eric in the living room, and Eric is drunk, but he's still trying to get some. I, I said, "Look, Eric, look, baby." Nine the time for that. It's, it's over with. We're not gonna do nothing. I'm not doing nothing. Just, just please, just go to bed, go to sleep, whatever. So I get. So I'm leaving here in the first thing in the morning when the sun rises. Okay, so y'all know we had to grab my house. My car stuck. Got stuck in the mud. They can't get me out till the next morning. The person I went to go see, he drunk. He tore up. My home girl and I went to the back back here in this spooky ass house with this dude Kyle. Okay, and here we go. Now, one thing that was very strange about it, I started wondering in my mind, when I was in the living room by myself with Eric, what a grandma. You know, we both be at a grandma's house. He told us that she in the house. I never saw her. You know what I'm saying? I never saw, I never saw an old woman in the house. So y'all, I meant I was gonna stay up. I was not going to sleep in there. I was gonna keep my eyes open. I was gonna, my phone was dead. I didn't have a charger, but guess what? So I decided that, you know, Eric finally had Dover's off on the, on the chair over there. And I'm sitting on the, on, the, on the sofa. So I called, I got, went to the kitchen to pick up the house phone, to try to call my, my husband to let him know, you know, I'll be home in the morning. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, kind of like keeping updated on what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Cause he think I'm, he think I took my homegirl out of town, not knowing that I came to cheat on his ass. So this, this right here. So I got up. It's about three o'clock in the morning. It's already spooky. It's dark. You know what I'm saying? It's nighttime. The only light on really is the light from the stove and the light from the TV playing in the living room. So I go in the kitchen or whatever. It's right by the living room. I ain't have to walk a long distance. And I went to pick up the phone. And when I picked up the phone, it did not have no dial tone. I'm like, what in the fuck is going on in this house? So I'm like, I'm spooked out. Okay, at this point, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so. Lo and behold, it, y'all, the sun started shining. It, the light, light, you know, it started getting daylight outside after hours and hours. Me sitting there waiting. So the first thing I did was take my ass back there to the room, try to, well, try to find the room that Tamika and Kyle was in, right? So I'm walking down the hall, and y'all, this is a long ass hallway. And then what was so strange about it, it was so many doors. Like, it was like a door here. A door right next to this door. A door right next to like it was like it was like so it was like a house with it was like a house you see on a horror movie. So I'm just knocking. I'm just running and knocking on each door. I'm like Tamika, Tamika. So finally I got to the right door, and she was like, "Yeah, come in." So I went in the room. They laying in the bed. I booed up like they've been knowing each other all their damn life. Okay. I said, I said, Kyle, you know, it's in the morning. You know what I'm saying? You know, you told me that your cousin pulled me out with your um with his tractor. He said, okay, I'm going to get up a call him right now. And he did. He They got up. So Tamika came in the living room with me. And Eric and Kyle went outside to wait on his cousin. Okay, so y'all, this right here is what was kind of crazy too. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this lady, be- I mean, she was like a damn angel, y'all. She was beautiful. She was a, a woman with long, gray, silky hair. She had a white, like, nightgown, robe type thing. And she was, I mean, she was beautiful. This lady was beautiful. She was like, hey, how y'all doing? And I was like, we good. She said, oh, y'all must be Kyle Company. Like, she was talking like a real elderly woman. She was old. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I, I didn't know y'all was here last night. 
And I wanted to say, hell, I didn't know you was here last night either. She said, I had been up all night. I was up and down all night in and out of the bathroom. Now, y'all, that part was spooky as hell because that's a damn lie. Because I'm thinking to myself, I was up all night. I ain't, it was no, it was nothing, nobody in this house but us. Nobody wasn't going to no bathroom with a bathroom right there by the, by the, um, by the living room in, in the kitchen where I was at. Nobody, nobody came and used that bathroom all night last night. Like, that is my first time seeing you. Okay, so, remember, now, let me take you back. Let me take you back to this part right here. Okay, y'all remember when I told y'all, about um the, the when I first when we first got there it was some mail on the table and a man's you know, work uniform like a like a mechanic suit like a uniform so Kyle came in did, I guess he 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 came in so I'm asking him I'm like Kyle did you um I said Kyle what was going on you know what I'm saying is he getting out the he had his back turned to me. The way, the way he was standing, his back turned to me. So I'm talking like I'm talking to y'all. I said, Kyle, how's it coming? You know, he keep getting out the mud. Kyle didn't say nothing. So I looked at Tamika, I'm like, what the heck? I said, Kyle, you hear me talking to you? He still didn't say nothing, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what the fuck is up with him, but I'm finna get the hell out of here. So about five minutes later, he came back in. He came back in, right? And I said, Kyle, you didn't hear me talking to you the first time. He said, what you talking about? I said, Kyle, I was just asking you. He was in here a few minutes ago. I was asking you about the car. He said, I ain't been in the house. He said, I ain't been in here. So I, we finally got out the mud. We finally got out the mud. His, his cousin came with a big tractor, like a farming tractor, some type of shit. Got us out the mud. And y'all, we hauled our ass back home. You hear me? We hauled back our ass back home. So in my neighborhood, it was a girl named Pumpkin that stayed in my neighborhood. She and she was from Newton. And me and her was used to sit outside and talk all the time. So I was telling her what happened, right? Y'all won't believe what Pumpkin said. Pumpkin from Newton. She knew them. Pumpkin said, I know them. She said, that house you was at, down that dirt road where Kyle Grandma stayed, they used to be a funeral home. They found it on a funeral home. And her husband used to work on cars, died in the house. Y'all, that's why so many damn doors was in the house. It was a funeral home. You know, you know how they had, at a funeral home, they had different doors, like for different bodies. Like, you know, the family view, everybody, every, every, every casket in a different room. They used to be a funeral home, y'all. That's why the lights went out. That man was, her husband was mad that we was there. And that's the end of it. That's the end. I, I will never forget that. I will never forget that. I spent my night, my, my spent the night in a goddamn funeral home trying to get some damn dick. I will never forget that. I will never forget that. The story time about how love can turn deadly. And these are people that I know personally. So I had a good friend. I don't want to put their family business out there on the internet. So I'm going to just say her name is Tiffany. I had a good friend. Um, her name was Tiffany. I've been knowing her since the 90s. We, we was like this. You know what I'm saying? Good, good friends. And let's just say her mama name was Mary. I'm going to just say that. Now, these were some very upscale people. These weren't no low class people. These were upscale people with a lot of damn money. And that, you know, was living a good lifestyle. Now, you know what I'm saying? Um, Tiffany Mama had married, well, not married, was dating a guy for a real long time, a man named Tim. We're we going to say his name is, um, we'll make up a name. We're going we to call him, y'all. We'll say his name was Willie. Okay, so, you know, me and Tiffany used to hang out all the time. You know what I'm saying? We was real close. That was my best friend. You hear me? I don't, I knew her before she had kids. She knew me before I had children. You know what I'm saying? We had been together. We had been friends forever. So, you know, um, and I went real close with her mama like that. You know what I'm saying? Me and her mama went real close, but I knew her mom. You know what I'm saying? I would see her mom. I'd go over to her house or uh, interact with, you know, her, her and her children. Her mom would always be in a picture. Her mama was crazy about her grandkids, y'all. So, you know, um, now, Miss Mary, her boyfriend, Willie, was a little bit younger than her. Not that much, but a little bit. And let me tell you, 
Miss Mary was well established. You know, she had her own house. I'm not talking about no rental. I'm not a house that she had owned and actually built on to. She had a nice, she had multiple vehicles. She had retired, I think, from a, from a good job. And y'all, she was an A1 grandmama. When I tell you the lady took care of them grandkids, like they was her own children. My friend Tiffany ain't have to worry about nothing. You hear me? That, I mean, she was always there to pick them up from school, take them to school, iron their school clothes, wash their clothes, whatever they needed, she, she did it. It don't matter what it was. So, you know, this went on for years. I've been knowing them for years. So this went on for years. But at the end, it started getting kind of bad. Tiffany came to me one day and she was like, Yolanda, Mr. Willigon, K-I-L-L, my mama. And I was like, why would you say that? Like, what, what? I, I was like, girl, don't speak no shit like that out your mouth. Like, she had made me mad because it's like, why would you speak that into existence? She was like, uh, like I said, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never seen them people argue. I never seen them people fussing or nothing. She said, Yolanda, Mr. Willoughby being mean to my mama. I said, but why would you say that? What's going on? He said, she said he be trying to control her. Like she get, she said, I know that my mama get nervous when she in front of him, stuff like that. So y'all, one day in 2017, I have a real, I don't know why I do this. I don't do it as much as I used to. I used to do it all the time, but I always used to always check the obituary and the news. That was a habit I always have. I always look at the obituaries and the news to see the website, to see if anybody I know who passed away or anything that happened in the city overnight or over the weekend or whatever. Now, you know, sometimes friends fall out. You know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes friends fall out. And me and Tiffany had kind of faded faded away for a couple of months. We I mean, her was off and on. You know, we would do that sometimes. We might have a disagreement and not talk for two or three months. So at that point, we was at a time where we wasn't talking. So I sit up in the bed one morning. It's early, about 7 o'clock in the morning. I get my phone. I'm checking the news website or whatever. And it's a Mr. Willie... I ain't gonna say, I can't use this. I can't use these people real now. I don't want to do that. But Mr. Woolley picture was on the front page of the website was wanted for the murder of two Albany, Georgia women. So I sat up in the bed and I opened up the website of the news saying, you know, trying to see what had been going on, whatever, around the come around the, around the city. And like I said, Mr. Willie picture popped up his picture. Saying that he was wanted for the murder of two Albany, Georgia women, right? Now, remember, me and my friend wasn't really talking at the time. We hadn't talked in about two months. So, I got on her page on Facebook to see that I see anything about, you know, anything about her mama or anything. And lo and behold, it kept saying, R.I.P. Miss Mary. R.I.P. Miss Mary. I started screaming to the top of my lungs. I could not believe it. Y'all, I could not believe it. But not only did he kill her, my best friend mama, he killed my best friend mama's sister. I'm going to say her name was Sarah. So my kids came running in the room like, Mama, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, I said, y'all, Mr. Willie killed, Mr. Willie killed Miss Mary. And they could not believe it. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was like, what in the hell? So, y'all, I had to get in contact with Tiffany. I had to get in contact with Tiffany. Because it's like, I want to offer my condolences. I want to know what the hell happened. Like, what in that world is going on? So, I text her on Facebook. Now, you know I know that this is a time in her life. Because it literally had just happened the night before. I found out about it the next day. So, I text her, I was like, look, I'm so sorry about what happened to your mom and your aunt. I said, please, give me a call when you get a chance. I, I really am so sorry. I said, I know, man, you got our issue, but we need to let bygones be bygones. Man, you too close for this. Please call me whenever you get a free moment. And y'all, she texted me and told me to call her. And I did. When I called her, she said, she, she didn't say nothing about it. I could tell she had been crying. She said, have, have, have your kid's father drop you off at my mama's house by seven o'clock. And I went over there. So, you know, when somebody passed away, it'd be a lot of people over there. You know what I'm saying? And I don't go like y'all. I talk to y'all a lot, but I don't like being around people. And she know that. 
I'm an introverted heart. I, I, I like being to myself. So I'm not, I'm not the type of person to try to walk up in a big old crowd of people and this and that, this and that. So when she saw us pull up, she told my kid's father to get out. He was driving. He told, she told him to get out and go sit on the porch with everybody else. And she going to sit in the car and talk to me. And so y'all, when she got in that car, I would never forget it. She looked at me in my face with tears flowing down her face. She said, Yolanda, I told you you were going to kill my mama. To this day, them words still give me chills. So all I could say was, what happened? I said, girl, what? I'm shivering. Like, I'm, like, I'm shivering because I'm so I'm nervous. It's, it's, it, it, we're at the house where she got murdered at. Like the house that we that we got up, everybody gathered at was the same house she, her and her sister got killed at. So it just a, it, it's an eerie feeling going on at this point. She said, "My mama came to my house yesterday, and she was so happy." She said, "Yolanda, she was just dancing. She was saying, I'm free.' I yeah, I remember these words like, and it was in 2017. I remember this exact conversation." She said, my mama was so happy. She was just dancing around. She was so happy. She was saying, I'm free. I'm free. I said, what you mean? She said she had put a restraining order out on him. And she had put him in her house, and she was so happy. She had came to my house to pick my kids. I told you she was an A1 grandmama. She had came to my house. She said she came to my house to pick my kids up and went back home. Now, mind you, her sister did not know that she had put a restraining out on her because her sister worked at a nursing home overnight. Like, you know, like late night shift. So she ain't had a chance to talk to her sister, none of that, right? So I guess he called himself so angry about her putting a restraining order out on him. He decided to come to the house late night. It was late. She was upstairs bathing her grandchildren. I think she had all four of them uh, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't want to lie. But I know she was raising some of her grandkids. And the sister had just got home from work. So the mama is in a, in a whole other area of the house raising the grandkids. And her, their house was pretty big. So you really can't hear what's going on. And so he came to the door. Now her sister was downstairs, I guess, in the kitchen making her something to eat. She had just got home from work or whatever it's going to be. Now these are older women. These, these women in their 50s. You know what I'm saying? She she not knowing that it was strife between them. She didn't know nothing about no restraining order or nothing. And y'all, well, he not on the door, and that's normal. You know, you know, somebody who knock on my door, and we all live together because they all was living together. You know, the sister was living with the two sisters were living together, and the, and the other sister boyfriend was living there too. You know what I'm saying? She didn't think it was nothing odd for him to knock on the door that he lived there, but she didn't know that lady had a restraining order out on him. Y'all, when her sister opened that door, he butchered her, basically, with a machete. And she upstairs didn't even know what was going on. Or well, wherever she was at, I ain't gonna tell upstairs. She was, on, she was in another part of the house, you know, what was going on. And he went upstairs and basically hurt her. Did the same thing to her in front of her grandchildren. So all I'm trying to say is this right here, y'all. We don't know people. I tell y'all all the time, you can lay in the bed with somebody every night and they can't stand you. I don't care how intoxicated you are. I don't care how high you is. I don't care what you got. I ain't no substance. I ain't nothing you got going on gonna make you act like that if you if that one already in you anyway. A machete though. A damn machete, a damn machete of all things. I'll never forget it. I will never forget in front of them damn kids. I will never forget that ever. I guess he called himself a man because she had put him out. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I said another thing too. We have to be careful about letting folks depend solely on us. Cause when a person back up against the wall, they get desperate. A desperate man is a dangerous man. Remember that. Okay, y'all. Story time. So y'all, let me tell you about the time when I met a guy. And lost my goddamn mind. So me and this dude, um, me and my homegirl had been out one night. Okay. The same homegirl that me and my ex-husband used to have threesomes with in the beginning. And me and her, we was out one night. We was having a good time. Just chilling, you know what I'm saying? Doing what we do. 
and we saw these niggas. They was fine as hell. You hear me? I had saw him at the red light, and um, he was like, "Where y'all finna go?" And my homegirl was like, "Follow us. We finna go to her house. To, well, to her house. To you know, my homegirl house." And so, you know what I'm saying? They follow us, and so we sat in the parking lot and talked to them for a while. You know what I'm saying? It, it was a good vibe. We were sitting in the parking lot just talking to them. Now, y'all, I'm like, what, 26, 27. So, the one that was for her, he left. But the one that was for me, he stayed. So, we went in the house or whatever. And so, my homegirl had cool. She had been cool or whatever. So, she wanted some leftovers. It's late night. You know what I'm saying? So, he was cool. He was a vibe. We was laughing. Oh, my God, y'all. This man, he was something. His name was Tim. He was so funny. I remember like it was yesterday. He was vibe. He had me dying laughing. You hear me? And so um, she was like, y'all might as well get married. How y'all acting about each other? Y'all act like y'all know each other all y'all damn life. And he said, shit, she might be my wife. You know what I'm saying? I said, well, shut the fuck up. I mean, we were slow dancing. She was playing music on her radio and everything. We were slow dancing. We were just enjoying each other. He was a whole vibe for me that night. The night was over and it was time for me to go home, time for him to go home. Um, I was like, well, how are we going to keep in contact with each other? He was like, I'm going to give you my number. He said, he said, he said you go call me. I said, yeah, I'm going to call you. So he gave me his number. He said, it's my grandfather's number. He was like, sometimes I be over there and sometimes I don't. He was like, because I ain't got no cell phone. He was a hood nigga now. Um, the next day, I woke up thinking about this damn man. It, he was so fun to me. So... About 10 o'clock the next morning, I called the number he gave me. Old man answered the phone, and he was like, um, I was like, can I speak to Tim? He was like, baby, Tim don't live here. Tim live across that river. That mean cross town. So I was like, he, he gave me his number, and he was like, yeah, he be over here every now and then, but not often. He be over there across that river. I'm like, well, damn. I said, well, well, if you ever talk to him, when you see him, let him know that Yolanda called. He was like, I sure will, baby. I'll let him know. Y'all, I could never get a call back from Tim. I could never get a call back from Tim. Now, I'm not from the city that, that this was happening. I'm not originally from there. But, I had to find that man. Because I knew that was my damn soulmate. From that one night, I just knew it, y'all. So, I told y'all, you know what I'm saying, he had gave me a number, which was his granddaddy number. And you know what I'm saying? He was like, he'd be able to run that house sometime to call him because he had no cell phone. Now, this was back in mid 2000s. They're going to say early 2000s. Probably about 2007. You know what I'm saying? He was a typical hood nigga. It wasn't like he was, you know, he was, he was a $10 man. But anyway, so, y'all, when we first met each other, this man was so cool. So I'm thinking, you know, God damn, it's, I like this man right here. You know what I'm saying? I want him. I want him. And I was type of one back then, whatever I got, I wanted. I always was like that. I wanted him bad. So every time I would call a number, he would never be there. So I'm like, damn, I gotta try to um get in contact with him some kind of way. I want him bad. So like I said, I'm not from that city, but I had moved there after I graduated high school. But anyway, so I was over at my homegirl house one day and her dude was over there. And I said, you know a dude named Tim? I don't wanna say his last name, but and he was like you come out with a chip too. I said, yeah, he got a chip too. Now, y'all, I'm so weird. I always thought flaws was so cute. Like, a flaw to me is attractive. It set a person aside from everybody else. So, a chip too, I, I love it. He said, yeah, I know Tim. He said, but Tim lived with his wife. So, I said, what? She, he said, yeah. He said, but I got his number on his number. So, he gave me Tim house phone number. So I'm trying to think, how in the hell I'ma call this man and he married? How I'ma get him on the phone? Cause I knew he wanted me just like I wanted him. So one day, I don't know what in the hell persuaded me to call this phone, but I had to cook up a good ass idea. I know he had told me he had been looking for a job. So I was, I called him. <laughs> I called him like I was calling him in for an interview. Now, y'all, I talk real, I, I talk real, you know, I can get professional when I need to. So, I called the phone, and I was like, hello, my please speak with Timothy, such and such. And it was his wife answered the phone. And she was like, who is this? And I said, my name is Yolanda. See, I said my real name so he could remember who I was. I said, this is Yolanda from Manpower. 
a no temp service from calling to call her men to come in for an interview for a job. So she didn't say nothing at first. And she said, she said, hold on. And she put the phone down. So I'm thinking she finna go get him, whatever the case may be. So all of a sudden the phone hung up. So I'm like, damn. And all of a sudden I get a call back on that from that number. And I'm thinking it's him. So I'm happy as hell, y'all. I answered the phone. I said, hello. Thank you for calling Manpower. And she said, bitch. I know you ain't no damn calling for no manpower. I know you ain't Tim fucked around. But we really didn't do nothing. But we was going to. I ain't gonna lie. But, you know, eventually. But it never happened. Because, I don't know. But I was like, no, we didn't. I said, I don't know him. She said, bitch, stop lying to me. I know you calling for my damn husband. So I'm like, I just hung up the phone. And so she called me back. And she was like, look, I don't have no problem too. She said, Tim always cheating on me. So at that point, she started telling me things that he had told her about me and him meeting that night. And so at this at this point, I knew she knew. I didn't try, I didn't try to deny it no more. Mm-hmm. She was, you know, she was like, Tim told me he met you and y'all was all booed up and all this shit. I was like, yeah, we did. She was like, you know, Tim always cheated on me. She said, you see, you see how them cuts on his arms? She said, I cut his ass up so many times for cheating on me. I'm like, God. I got scared then. So me and her began to kind of build a friendship. But see, I'm thinking I'm going to use that to my advantage because that way I can I can see Tim. I can see Tim when I wanted to. I was young then, so I'm stupid. I, I ain't really thinking about this lady inviting me over to her house. So y'all, one day Tim was at work and she he didn't know this, but she had invited me over to their house. So they had just had a baby. Now, mind you, the baby was a little baby. I was so happy to get over there because I'm thinking to myself, I'm finally finna see him. I'm finally finna see him. Y'all won't believe what happened. Um, This is about when I met a dude named Tim and lost my damn mind. Part three. And let me say this. If you haven't seen part one and two, you got to watch it so you can know what's going on. Because this is going to get real juicy. So after I had found out he was married and I still wanted him after that. I, you know, I tell you, I, I called his wife and all that and did all that. And she called me back and we kind of built a little friendship. At least I thought. So, you know, like I said, she invited me over to their house while he was at work one day. You know, we had kind of started talking on the phone and being quote unquote associates. So I'm so happy because I'm thinking that I'm finna see Tim. This is my opportunity to see him again. You know what I'm saying? I was sneaky as hell. I ain't gonna lie. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be flirting. I could possibly, you know what I'm saying? We could see each other in her face so y'all i got dressed i had got real cute now i wasn't this big not saying i'm i ain't cute now i'm just saying i was younger so you know i was looking good you know and i got dressed up i wanted to look nice because i didn't want her to see me looking raggedy anyway so y'all I went over there now he at work and they had a little bitty baby they had, they had, they had other kids too but she had just had a baby Okay, so I get over there, and this lady, she is uh, Amazon. Like, she's really, really tall, and I'm sure I ain't but five four, and she's really, really big, but not big, like big and fat, big and like muscular, like stocky. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm not a fighter. I ain't never been in a fight in my life, so I already know if it go down. I, but my mind wasn't even on that. You know what I'm saying? And, Cause she was so cool on the phone. All I want, all I want to do is see her husband anyway. I wouldn't even stand by being her friend to be honest with you. I was just being on my sneaky shit and I want to see her man. So y'all, I'm over there, right? And I, I stayed for a long time. I'm trying to stay long as I can till he get home from work. And lo and behold, he got home from work. I had butterflies. Cause I, I, mean, I heard her say, oh, they gonna tear him right up. I'm like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm finally finna see him again, but I'm trying not to let it show on my face that I'm happy about seeing her husband. Y'all, when he walked in that door and he saw my face, I was holding that baby. I was holding the little newborn baby. He remember, you know, of course he remembered me. He looked like he had seen a damn ghost. And he walked down the hall to the bedroom. I'll never forget it. So she, he called her in the room. Now I'm in the living room by myself holding the baby. He, he called her in the room. So I'm thinking, you know, I ain't know what was going on back there in the room. But y'all, when she came out that bedroom, get what she said. This lady said, 
I know you gave Tim some head. And I'm like, what the hell? Because I really didn't do that. I didn't do no mess like that. Oh, when she confronted me, every fear I had in my, in it, baby, I ain't never been scared I had in my life. Cause mind you, I'm in their house. This man done told this lady some bullshit. Clearly, he scared of her his damn self. She done cut him up. And she coming toward me. Now, I'm holding their baby. So, guess what? I'm walking toward the door. I'm steady back. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I said, oh, uh-uh. I said, why he lied on me? But I'm trying to get the fuck out of her house. Because she don't, she don't believe her husband. You know she don't believe that damn husband. Y'all, I put that baby down in that car seat that was sitting right there on that chair. <laughs> when I tell you I got the hell out of that damn lady house. <laughs> and... I, you know what? After that, she tried to she tried to she tried to continue to stay in contact with me. But now that I'm older, I realize she only tried to stay in contact with me to make sure that I wasn't messing around with her husband. But baby, when he went and told that lady that bullshit, I knew then this motherfucker crazy, and she is too. You know what I'm saying? Now I ain't gonna lie, I probably was a damn fool for going over there. But I know some sneaky shit. I'm thinking we can goddamn. You know you gonna play this shit off. You don't want to tell this lady some bullshit like that. You wanted her to beat my ass for coming over there. That, that's what it was. And that was the end of Tim. I met him one night. We enjoyed each other, but baby, it went. It turned into a disaster. Never again. And y'all, I seen Tim about three years ago. Um, somewhere he looked totally different. He had dreads and stuff. And he remembered me. He said, I know you. I said, I know, I know you too. Now, mind you, that's been a long time ago that happened. He said, I know you. I said, I know you too. But y'all, TM died. TM died. My friend told me the other day that he had passed away. So, yeah. But that was the end of that. How did I get cheated on right in front of my face? So my ex, a few months back, he had a party at an Airbnb and he told me that it was going to be strippers there and it was his friend's birthday and all that. So I wasn't going to come because I wanted him to have fun and enjoy his time or whatever. As soon as I got to the party, everything went downhill and that was the worst night of my life. Hey y'all, so this is the story time of how I got cheated on right in front of my face. Excuse the noise, I'm in the airport right now waiting to go home. But let's jump right into the story. So, as y'all know, my ex had a party for his friend at an Airbnb. So, the Airbnb was way in Orlando, and I live, like, almost two hours away from Orlando. So, I go to the party or whatever. I get there, and it was all cool. At like, I had already got my own bottle, so I'm just sitting off to the side, like, not talking to nobody and letting my men have fun, right? So, they got strippers there, and everybody turning up, and I'm just sitting off to the side, you know, minding my business, being cute and classy. So the whole night, like, all these dudes kept walking up to me, like, trying to talk to me. So that was already a red flag because I'm like, if my man said I'm coming, why have people who at the party trying to talk to me? Because you should tell people that I'm off limits, right? So long story short, every time he's seeing a boy talking to me, he'll come up in my face and be like, what's going on? What's going on? I'm like, you tripping. Like, I'm just sitting over here, right? So by the time we get to the end of the night, everybody leaving, whatever. So it's time for all of us to go into the room. Mind y'all, I didn't notice at first, but the strippers were staying at the Airbnb where everybody else was staying. So, while I'm walking to the room, all the strippers are already looking at me crazy like I ain't supposed to be there. So, I finally get in the room and I sent him to the car to get my bag so I could take a shower and stuff. And then I lay down because I'm kind of tipsy and I was off that Casamigo. So, I lay down and I just so happened to doze off. And next thing I know, I wake up, it's like 20 minutes later and this man's still not back. So at this point, I'm mad. I started calling his phone, blowing him up. I'm like, bring me my keys right now so I can go home. Like, I'm over this. I'm ready to go. Y'all, tell me why I called this man 20 times and he did not pick up the phone, not one time. So I started searching all over the house for him. I'm like, I told his friends, I'm like, have you seen him? Have you seen him? They like, no, no, we haven't. We have Finally, I asked one of his other homeboys. Obviously, this homeboy didn't like him because he told me what he was at. He was like, oh, yeah, he went in a room with some girl. And I said, he did what? He was like, yeah, he in that room right there. So I go to the room and I start banging on the door. Mind y'all, it's like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. So everybody was laying down. I don't care. I woke up the whole entire house. <clears throat> so I'm banging on the door for a good three minutes and nobody opened the door yet. So finally, the door opened, and it's the stripper who been in his face the whole entire night. 
So she opened the door and I go in the room and he coming out of the bathroom with a freak out butt plug in his hand. Y'all, as soon as I seen that butt plug, I launched on him. So we left off on part one where I caught my man with a butt plug in his hand. A lot of y'all had questions about where the butt plug came from and I'm about to let y'all know. It came from the stripper's a-hole, okay? So all night it was this one stripper I kept seeing because she had a lighting up ring in her behind. Literally her butthole was lit up the whole night with the butt plug. So imagine my surprise when I go in the room and that same butt plug is in my man's hand. Anyway, so I finally get in the room and I'm telling him like give me my key so I could go. Why this man holding me st- hostage refusing to give me my key? So I just started picking up anything and hit him over the head with it. Y'all, I grabbed the got to be glue bottle and started beating him over the head with it and everything. And I don't even put my hands on people because I do not support domestic violence at all. But I was drunk and my mind told me to beat him down because he really tried me. So at this point, we in the room fighting. The stripper on the bed, butt booty naked. My man in the room, butt booty naked with the butt plug. And I'm just sitting over here looking crazy. Next thing you know, everybody start coming out of the room. They like, what's going on? What's going on? But me and him steady fighting. And then this nigga had the nerve to say that my hits was weak. Like, that made me so mad. So we steady tussling and wrestling. I'm steady telling him, like, give me my key so I can go. Give me my key so I can go. He like, no, go in there and lay down. Go lay down. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. In my mind, I'm like, is this man kidding me right now? Like, this can't be real life. So finally, he picked me up and he put me out of the room and he locked the door with him and the stripper inside of the room. So I'm banging on the door again. I'm like, bro, give me my key so I can leave. Like, what you want me here for anyway? Give me my key so I can leave. So finally, he slid the key under the door. So I get my key and I start walking down the stairs to leave. I look over my shoulder and he following me. So we in the street, we get to... Well, I get to beating him again, and he has hair, so I was pulling his hair, and he was getting beat with my phone in the middle of the street. And then I tell him I'm finna go back in the house and get with one of his homeboys. Y'all, this man say he was gonna pum pum me and the homeboy if I went back in the house. So I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm just leaving. So I get in my car, and he's still standing in the street. Y'all, I almost had a life sentence, so I, cause I tried so hard to hit him with my car. I'm not gonna even lie to y'all. But he got out of the street at the right moment, so I didn't run him over. And that's pretty much the end of the story. So, yeah, that's how I got cheated on. This comment is so funny because I don't know what more you want me to say. But I did see some comments asking, like, what was the resolution to all this? So, I did block him on everything, and he still tried to hit me up. Um, But a few weeks later, he went to jail. And y'all, I told my brother about this story and he got so mad. Like, he was ready to fight him. But I ain't tell him who the person was. Anyway, once he went to jail, I was like, God, don't play about me because you did me like that. You did me so dirty. And now look where you at. And eventually he made a new page on Facebook and hit me up. But I live in Houston, so like. But y'all, he was so fine. Like, I was. He was just so fun. I can't. But So, yeah, we don't talk no more. We never going to talk. Like, that was the craziest experience of my life. I'm going to make sure I give y'all most story times because I have the craziest stories ever, but I just don't like to tell my business on TikTok. But y'all seem to want to be in my business, so I'm going to let y'all know all the crazy stuff I go through. Like, y'all will not believe the life I live. <laughs> okay, y'all, this is the spinoff story time of me getting cheated on with a stripper right in my face. So if y'all haven't seen the first part, go watch that. So as y'all know, I was at the park and you know, all that stuff transpired when you got to get into the details. So while this party was happening, when I told y'all I was sitting cute in class, I was sitting by the DJ for a majority of the night, right? So the DJ, he was like talking to me the whole night. And every time the DJ would talk to me, that's when my so-called man would walk over there and be like, basically trying to check me. And if you've seen the third part of my video, um, you will see that I was saying he almost broke two of my nails trying to get my phone. That's because he saw me talking to the DJ and he was mad about it. Fast forward to a couple days after the party, I get a message from some girl on Instagram. Now at first I'm like, is somebody reaching out for my so-called man? Cause I blocked him on everything. But it was a girl, she was asking me to do her makeup cause I used to be a makeup artist for like a month or so. So 
she asked me to do her makeup. But I had told her, like, I'm not doing makeup at this time. So then she sent me a message. She was like, well, I'm hitting you up for my brother. And now I'm really thinking it's about my so-called man because, you know, he has a sister. Turns out it's the DJ's sister. So I go to my main Instagram page and I see that he messaged me in my request. So I'm like, whatever. I started messaging him back because he was fine. And y'all know I had just went through a rough time. So, you know. I was getting my groove back. It was a little quick, but who cares? So we started texting or whatever. And then like a week or so passed by and I was telling him about work. This was the time when I was a teacher. So I was telling him I had a bad week. So he had flowers and candies and wine sent to my job. And everybody at my job was so hyped. Like, oh my gosh, he's sending you stuff. Like he's a keeper. He's this and he's that. So it was nice to have that after this traumatic situation I just went so I was like, oh, my God, just the sweetest. Like, you know, I just got play, and now I met somebody who, like, really nice and caring. So I'm like, okay, okay, I see you. So fast forward, like, another week or so, he make a plan to take me out on a date. So we go parasailing, and it's, like, the best date ever. Like, that was the most fun date I had. But I had I was all the way in Tampa, so, like, it was, like, a whole little weekend. I know before y'all say Stranger Danger, it was a YOLO moment. I'm real sorry. But anyway, fast forward to the night, we decide to, you know, go out and party. Y'all, tell me why we was drinking Hennessy and I got so drunk. I really blacked out and I don't remember the night, which is not a good thing because, you know, I really don't know this person. Like, But I threw up all in his car. Like, he just had brought a brand new car and I threw up all in it. And he was telling me the next morning that he had to clean it all out and I was so embarrassed. But he still was trying to, like, you know, talk to me. So I'm like, okay, he ain't really phased by, you know, it is what it is. So we still texting each other or whatever. Like, we're still talking. And then, like, a couple more weeks go. And he asked me to come with him to, like, one of his little DJ gigs in Orlando. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm supposed to meet him at his house. And we I ride with him to Orlando. But I was late leaving my house. So I made him late to his gig. And his friends... Him and his friends started talking about me in Creole. So I was already mad about that because, like, I know y'all talking about me. Anyway, long story short, they was talking about me. And I kind of had an attitude because, like, why are you talking about me? So we get to the gig and it's this lady there. And this lady, she is, like, looking at me crazy because I'm sitting with him at the DJ booth. And the whole time, she's literally, like, staring at me with a stank attitude. So I'm asking him, I'm like, do she know me or something? Like, what's going on? And he like, oh no, I don't know who that is, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, why is she staring at me like that? Like, what have I done to her? Come to find out he did know her. Like, 